friends. I think we should spend our time just trying to survive this shit. If we do this, we'll be heroes forever. So we got a new Netflix original title, Bright, with Will Smith and Joel Edgerton, and it looked good. But what did I think about it? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Hidavery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Bright, a Netflix original. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, we have Bright. And like I said, for like the third time, this is a Netflix original. I was really excited about this movie. Of course, why? Because it has Will Smith. And I am a big, big, big Will Smith fan. Of course, you know Will Smith from Fresh Prince bad boys concussion um in any other movie you know that he's come out with i mean he everything he does is freaking fantastic we also have joe edgerton in this movie as well who's been in the gift black mask and warrior warrior is a fantastic movie i believe that came out in 2011 about mma or ufc fighting it's a very underrated film if you haven't seen that film i strongly recommend that you do see it but this is being directed by david Ayer. The Raven Air, uh, I said the Raven Air. David Air directed Street Kings, End of Watch, which I have seen, and I own that on Blu ray. I love that movie. And he also did Suicide Squad, which I did not love. I pretty much despised that movie. That was not a good movie at all to me. But this is, I believe, the second time that Will Smith and David Air are working together again on the film. So, you know, they kind of know how each other works. So that always makes, you know, better for a picture. Uh, in my opinion, this movie is being uh, written by Max Landis, um, kind of an outlandish character, if you ask me, but not I don't mean that in the bad way. He wrote Chronicle and he also wrote American Ultra. And those are two films that I did enjoy as well. I really did like uh, Chronicle more than uh, American Ultra, but you really can't compare those films at all. They're two completely different films, uh, but they both of those films do stand out completely different from any other Hollywood production. The budget behind this movie is ninety million dollars, and that makes that this makes this movie the most expensive Netflix movie to date. And actually, there was a bidding war for this movie. Um, I believe Warner Brothers was closest to grabbing it for the distribution, um, but David Ayer decided to go with Netflix. I when my research was based because he wanted to have more creative control and uh during the directing and i can't blame them you know for that because this is a very peculiar film you know in a good way i will say that and actually max landis who wrote this he actually wrote the uh screenplay and the script for david air he said that he wanted david air to direct this movie he wrote it for him and um and max landis saw the script for three and a half 3.5 million dollars and max landis actually turned down an extra million so he could have got 4.5 million for this but he turned down an extra million because he really wanted david air to direct this movie and max landis also said that this movie is kind of like his star wars movie and that he all he com him and David Ayer really compares this to End of Watch. And if you've seen End of Watch and you've seen um, uh, Bright, which we're talking about, you really can see the similarities as far as the directing style and the tone is concerned. Um, I believe I don't know if this is like an official tagline or like a fan made it up, but I kept seeing somewhere that it, this was like Bad Boys and Mordor, and I could not agree with that more because this movie is a mixture of Bad Boys plus Lord of the Rings, and Mordor is a place in Lord of the Rings if you haven't seen that uh, if you haven't seen that franchise, and I recommend that you do. But not only is it Bad Boys and Lord of the Rings, but to me, it also has a little bit of Running Scared uh, mixed in there as well. Uh, the two thousand. I can't remember if it was 2008 or 2012. I'm sorry I didn't look that up. The one that's starring Paul Walker because there is a Richard Pryor movie that came out in the 80s that's called Running Scared as well. And, you know, we don't want to get those films mixed up. But what this movie is about is um, Will Smith is a cop by the name of Ward, a human. And Joel Edgerton's character is a cop, his partner as well. And he's an orc. 
and you know orcs were in lord of the rings and then you also have elves as well and within their partnership you know um joel edgerton is happy to be a cop he's happy to be uh will smith's partner and will smith is uh ward is happy to be a cop as well but he really is not fond of having joel edgerton and orc as his partner and kind of just wants to uh get away you know from him if he possibly can and in this movie i mean it's on netflix you can watch it now if you have netflix i'm not gonna spoil it heavy there may be some slight spoilers towards the end of the view but i will give you plenty of time and you know let you know when i'm going to do that but what it's about is that they're just like having a, a buddy cop movie and they kind of just stumble on a bunch of magic and you know and and this movie um there's a lot of magic and mysticism and fantasy going around and they find this magic weapon this wand or that grants the the beholder the wielder pretty much infinite power and you know everybody whether they're human whether they're orc whether they're a re uh, elf a regular civilian a policeman a sheriff fbi or their version of the fbi everybody's just trying to get their hand on this weapon or whatever and will smith war and jacoby who's being played by uh joe edgerton the um the uh, his partner or whatever they're in the middle of it and this experience for me may be slightly different from everybody else because i was i actually saw this movie thursday night and i'm just not getting to a review sorry and i actually saw it in the theater um, I was lucky enough to see it in the theater, so I actually got that big screen and that super duper surround sound. So and with all the chaos and mayhem going around, it may pop a lot harder for me and make me like the movie a little bit more than you. You know, if you're watching it at home and you necessarily don't have the best, you know, home theater sound system and picture quality um you know out there that's available but from the very beginning of this movie i love the way it started um i love the scenery i love the imagery i love the contrast the cinematography all of that i love the pacing of the movie i love the soundtrack i mean i was bobbing my head i mean this was something that i would not mind buying the soundtrack was great um we get to see will smith being himself and that's not a bad thing because will smith does play himself in a lot of his movies but that is not a bad thing because he just has all that charisma and gall or whatever and he can you know just do any role or whatever he's a really charming guy and he's just great on screen he has a very strong presence and he's very funny as well and he really does deliver the lines and he really does deliver the jokes in this movie and it's just funny and it's just and it's just great to see everything because i mean this is a fantasy science fiction magical extravaganza in modern day age excuse me and we get to see everybody you know engrossed into that but tied into the world that we know today or whatever so i mean he's coming out in his front yard or whatever try to get rid of pests and he has you know some people over here neighbors you know just living their lives bumping their music having a good time not bothering anybody but instead of him trying to get squirrels away from his his house of birds or bees or any pets he has to get away magical fairies or whatever and it's just kind of funny the way they integrated all that in and just kind of made this fantastical movie out of all of it and it just kind of flows smoothly i mean none of it was abrupt or abstract or stood out i mean it looked like it was it, it belonged there and so i mean i just really have to give max landis the writer and david air the director for able to you know put all that together and make it seem like something real you know that we all today in the real world can be a part of now the orcs are completely different from the humans of course and the elves are too you pretty much know how they are you know if you've seen the lord of the rings but if you um if you haven't they kind of give uh they kind of break it down for you here of course we know who humans are the elves are really snobby and they're perceived as very snobby and rich and kind of run the world orcs are kind of perceived as like the troublemakers and you know the thugs of the community and you know we hear these uh, stereotypes all the time in real life where it, it talks about black people um and so in me as a black man a black american african-american you know i that you know kind of just set off an exclamation point you know inside of me i wasn't offended or anything a friend of mine you know kind of said they may have been just a little bit but you know i i didn't take it that way because i'm not just gonna dive into the stereotypes because i know how i am i know how my people are i'm just saying how they was trying to kind of compare stereotypes to real life or whatever some of it was on point some of it was not you know but i really did enjoy all of it 
Um, I, I talked about Will Smith and how funny it was, but some, you know, they really did have a great mixture of the movie being very funny with his jokes being perfectly timed and also the violence. I mean, there is a lot of violence in this movie. A lot of people getting blown up, getting stabbed, getting shot in the face, all kinds of stuff in different sceneries, car chases, dog chases, things like that, shootouts, gunfights, all that good stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I was really enjoying all of it. I mean, just taking it all in. There's a lot of social commentary, which I just mentioned as well. And the story of the film, I like how that unfolded as well, too. I've seen this twice now. I saw it Thursday night and then I came uh, today. I'm recording this uh, Saturday night. Uh, right now and I watched it again earlier today I wasn't paying attention too much but I had it in the background I was doing some other things on my laptop but it was right there you know and I was I was watching it earlier today and I really do like the way that the plot unfolded I was able to catch a few things the second time that I missed the first time and I just really liked the lore of everything and how there was this ancient war between humans orcs and elves from 2,000 years ago and some people were all fighting on the wrong side and they're still paying the price and you know Know, still dealing with the repercussions 2,000 years later and I like all that and there is a bunch of prejudice in this movie there's a lot of racist racism in this movie or speciesism in this movie however you want to say it because you know racism in the real world deals with humans and the human race and humankind but there are different species hum or orcs elves and um and human beings are different species so some of it is ridiculous but some of it in the way where people have prejudice to a certain character and are very cautious they actually have a somewhat of a valid reason to be nervous or whatever because like for for instance the orcs you know they just know for a like a fact that the humans are like look orcs they have clan law and they put that above everything else I mean, it's just orcs to the day they die. They're always going to protect their own. So if you have a cop that is an orc, like, excuse me, Joel Edgerton's character, Will Smith's partner. If an orc is doing something bad, are you really going to take out the orc? You know, or, or are you going to um, or are you going to protect the orc because that's your people and you're going to, you know, treat your fellow human being police officers as second fiddle. And that kept coming up within the film. And I like how they put that in there because it just created more tension and thickened the plot as the film progressed on. Now, um, I talked about how violent it is. The action is great, too. Um, that, that was fantastic. I loved all that, especially when it came down to these uh, renegade elves. Uh, by the, by the name of Inferni or whatever, and when they popped up on the screen or whatever, they were not a force to be messed with or whatever. It, it was like kind of like remember when you saw the Matrix that came out of '99, and Morpheus played by uh, Lawrence Fishburne was like in Trinity, uh, play oh, was it Carrie? What is I forgot Trinity's name or whatever. I was going to say Carrie Fisher, but I, for some reason I can't think of her name. But remember they was explaining to uh, Neo or whatever to. Um, Keanu Reeves like, hey, when you see an agent, you do not engage an agent. You do not fight them. You run the other way. You get out of the matrix. You try to escape. That is how these renegade Inferni L's were portrayed in this movie. Like, whoa, you know, I mean, even if you have a SWAT team, you better be careful or whatever, because they are quick. They are fast. They are ruthless. They have no regard. They have no remorse and they will kill you. They may even kill children or whatever in this movie. And then they kind of did that off screen, which was, I think, was smart, even though this is rated R. But you just run the other way. And when these renegade L's popped on the screen, I was like, like everybody. Remember, I saw it in the theater. So everybody in the theater was like, oh, God damn. Oh, ah, you know, gasping back and forth, including myself or whatever. But, um, you know, so I was going to get to it, but, but I'm going to just keep on going um, as far as the positives are concerned. So I talked about the elves, the orcs, the humans, the action, the violence, the comedy, the story, the plot, you know, all that good stuff. They also had something called the Shield of Light, which I liked it as well. But towards the end of the film, um, I was like, I was like, when I was in the theater, I was like, man, I cannot wait to get home to make a video about this, to write about it, telling everybody to go see this movie. But there was one um, scene to where uh, Will Smith and Jacoby or Ward and Jacoby were captured by these orcs and they got the crap beat out of them. And they took them until this orcs uh, and this is kind of slight spoilers right here to their home or whatever, their base. And they were the one of the king orcs or whatever, the, the lead bosses or whatever, or that street was just kind of like, man, look, you know, everything was crazy. 
I wanted to organize my people and have some order and to keep the peace. You know, every month I try to have a party. I try to have a celebration. You know, I get everybody drunk. I feed everybody and I just have one rule, no guns and you cops messed it up or whatever. And during that scene, um, it kind of you start going down as far as the quality is because at one particular part, Will Smith got the living crap kicked out of him. I mean, just beaten down to a bloody pulp. And then right after that, he's just able to walk away and just shake it off. And I was kind of like, wait a minute, you know, what's going on there? And kind of like another plot hole that came up early in the film is like the they're trying. Everybody's trying to get after this one. Right. And they're in this cop car. They just got away from a car. Some somebody chasing them in the car with like an automatic weapon, just spraying them down. Right. And I love that scene. But the one started flying in the car and made the car eject because the one had a, a binding spell on it and then could not, you know, the binding spell made the one not go deter away from its original master, which is a bright or whatever brights or the only people that can, you know, hold the one if, you know, and if you don't, uh, if you're not a bright and you try to hold a one, you know, you're going to explode. And so and some people in this movie learned that the hard way. And I like the fact that they put that in to where there was a bonding spell. But then right after that, that bonding spell just went away. I mean, like it never it didn't it didn't make sense to me unless the owner was just around the corner or down the street, not too far away. I'm just like, well, OK, why are they way over here? And then the owner, the elf, the renegade, the inferni are way over here. And there's no more bonding spell. So that was like another inconsistency to me right there. And then something else that just kind of turned me off was. When the Inferni, these renegade elves popped up and they're just able to moss everybody, just kick everybody's ass. Just, you know, I mean, just taking no names, blowing up brains or whatever. And later, I mean, seriously, later on in the movie, when Jacoby and War were engaging them in battle, they were able to kind of hang with them just a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you, why is it these Inferni elves kicking Will, uh, War and Jacoby's butt? But they were able just to kill all these other cops earlier with SWAT teams and things like that with ease. But they're kind of struggling towards the end. And also, um, the ending, it had a lot of action, but it was all just a little still anticlimactic for me. I wanted a little bit more. Um, so I was slightly disappointed there. And originally I gave the movie um, like a 7.5, but I'm going to give it a little bit higher because I learned that there was a sequel already to this movie greenlit before this came out. So everything that I did not see in this movie, because I did want to see the big demon raised back or whatever and try to wreck hell on everybody in Los Angeles, because this takes place in Los Angeles. I did want to see more of the Shield of Light because there was a character in this movie that was talking about the Shield of Light. So I wanted to see the Shield of the Light using magic on the super elves and things like that but if we already have a sequel coming or whatever that makes me like the movie much better um you know because i know it's coming or i hope it's coming but as far as that's concerned those are my only gripes pretty much everything else guys i really did enjoy you know this and i may watch it again since i can watch it home on netflix now for the third time and i, I originally i was gonna give it a 7.5 but if i had to rate bright out of a 1 out of 10 i would give it an 8 out of 10 yes an 8 out of 10 but guys well, do i do I want to even give a higher than that Oh, no, I'm gonna get yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, eight out of ten. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Bright or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it, and look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff is at the bottom of the screen, and I made it easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Bright, directed by David Ayer, written by Max Landis, and starring Will Smith and Joel Edgerton. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.